Okay, so we're going to look at compound inequalities today. Um, actually, I could probably do this as a longer set of notes and do compound inequalities with absolute value inequalities, but I'm going to separate this and do a shorter version just on compound inequalities, and then you can worry about the absolute value later. Anyways, all right, so what's my goal today for you to be able to do is solve compound inequalities and show solution areas. Ooh, that sounds like it's going to be hard, sir. Nah. Okay, so what is a compound inequality? Compound inequality consists of two inequalities joined by the words and or or. And is the intersection of two inequalities, and usually or is just like, or is like two graphs on one number line. Or let's say two problems, two problems in one. Okay? So, kind of think of it like that, uh, and most of the ands will look a certain way, most of the ors will look a certain way. Okay, so kind of, let's look at that and see what that means. Okay, so here's some examples of, like, say, like, joining. Okay, x greater than or equal to negative 4, x less than 3, what is x greater than or equal to 4 and less than 3? Well, here's a graph of x greater than or equal to 4, negative 4, then one of less than 3, and then the joining is where they intersect in that little area. Notice how it's in between those two. Now, that's not how most ands are going to look. Most ands are going to look like this. Okay, most and inequalities look like something in between two things. Okay, so here's an example of an and inequality. I'm saying 8 is less than 3y minus 7, and at the same time, 3y minus 7 is less than or equal to 23. Now, if you covered up the 8, like put your hand over the video, cover up the 8, what would you do first? You would add 7 to the 23, right? Well, then do the same thing at the other end with the 8. 8 doesn't want to be ignored. Why? You're going, okay, I'll give add 7 to 23, but I'm going to ignore 8. 8 doesn't want to be ignored. Work from the middle, add, and then you can divide. So I now have 8 plus 7 is 15, 23 plus 7 is 30, the 7 is gone in the middle, and now I need to divide everything by 3, because that's what I have in the middle, I'm saying multiplying by 3. So now I have 5, it, y is between 5 and 10, and I would graph that, put a 5 and a 10, close dot at 10, open dot at 5, and an interval notation that would tell me that the answer is between 5 and 10, that's my interval notation. I wanted to include that so y'all can kind of get a reminder from the last test. All right, so let's look at another example. You say, what the, we can look at another example? Yes, we can. Okie dokie. So same thing. What am I going to do? I'm going to get rid of the 8 in the middle, the plus 8, so the opposite of a plus 8 is minus 8. I'm going to do the same thing on both ends. <clears throat> so negative 12 minus 8, negative 32, or 32 minus 8, and I would get negative 20 and 24. Then I can divide by 4 and get negative 5, and 6. So x is between negative 5 and positive 6. Most ands are going to be like this, where the variable is in between two numbers. And you can easily do um, interval notation with that. What about or? Or is like having two problems in one, and you're graphing like almost two distinct graphs in one. So you kind of have to realize that you're doing two graphs or two answers, but you're going to solve for one or show the graph on one graph. Anyways, here's an example of or. Notice how I'm graphing the, 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 the first two, and then the gray is when I join it together. Notice that the usually ors go in separate directions. They don't like to be together. They decided, oh, we don't want to be together. We go away. Boom, there you go. All right, so let's look at this. Let's look at an example. This one, you would have like two separate problems almost, but you're going to graph them on the same number line. So notice here, I'm going to subtract, and on the other one, I'm going to divide. I graph both of them, and pay attention to the way the arrows are going. Less than negative 10 means open dot, go to the left. Greater than or equal to 6 means close dot, go to the right. So then that would be my graph. Whoops, that would be my graph. There you go. Okay, so here's another problem, another example. Again, notice how these are like almost like two separate problems, but I'm going to join them together on the same number line. So here, I'm going to add 5, 
to this left, on the left one, I'm going to add 5, then divide by 2. So I now have a number that's supposed to be less than negative 3, or it could be subtract 7, divide by 3 to get 9. So I can say flip it like that, 3 or 9, and that would be the answer. Now, I can also show this through interval notation, but this one's a little bit longer because you got one side that's going negative infinity to negative 3, and the other one that goes from 9 to positive infinity. So you notice the interval notation has like that. And that's really about it. I want you all to get some practice with this first before we worry about the uh, absolute value inequalities that we will cover later. Anyways, that's it for today. Short and sweet. That's what I try to go for. Hope you all enjoy this. You all take care. Thank you so much.